Your heart rate is pounding, your guts are wrenching, and your palms are sweaty as you are, boom, snapping that final shell into the enemy opponent, praying that it doesn't bounce, and coming out with a 1 versus 3, 7, 8,000 damage clutch in tier 10. Those are some of the most awesome, epic moments in Blitz. And I can also tell you I've had many of times when I've bounced that shell and died, losing that 7,000 damage game. Clutching battles in Blitz is something that feels amazing, because it's all of your skill that you have been able to use in one battle and completely change the tides of a game. Unfortunately, I've noticed lately and later in the Blitz games that clutches just don't happen anymore. Most of the time when I play a tier 10 battle, depending on what vehicle I'm running, let's say like this Progetto 65 here. Well, today I was playing my Progetto quite a bit, and for a lot of the battles I was playing, I kept going up against this platoon doing a double STB1. Now, if you don't know, the Progetto's big weakness is the turret armor. It has no turret. It's literally like 150 millimeters thick. And what that means is any vehicle that's a hull down tank can just rip this thing apart. You feel kind of useless. And I can't tell you how irritating it is to go up against a super strong platoon of vehicles that you just kind of feel useless before you even start the battle, or playing on Canyon up against a Concept 1B. I mean, the game's a loss before it even starts. And that's just been the most irritating thing for me in my Progetto today. Thankfully, I did pull out one really solid game, an incredibly solid game, and I thought, you know what, I want to go over this game, showcase why this is something that might help you guys in the future on knowing how to clutch battles and even in a very weird vehicle like this. Now, I will say that clutching games does require a lot of skill, but it's also based on the tank you play, because if you pull out a slow vehicle like a mouse or an E100, sure, there are plenty of games, I've seen 10,000 damage games in an E100 and a mouse. But for the most part, it's very, very rare to come out with a clutch battle, especially against a medium tank that knows what they're doing, because you're just going to get outspotted and die. So the most important thing I can say about clutching battles is mobility. It's so, so important. But the next most important thing is the gun. Mobility plus a clip is really just the best way you can clutch games, because when you're in a one versus three engagement, well, you want to be able to clear the opponent that you're fighting as quickly as possible before the other to, or, you know, whatever amount, get back over to you before they get ready to kill you. You can't fight one versus three when all three opponents are shooting at you at once. So if you have mobility, plus the clip to clear an opponent, or very badly bring them down to a one-shot, that's something that feels amazing. So here we go. In this battle, we've already done okay. I've gotten two shells out into that 50 TP prototype, and with that, we're sitting at 1,033 damage already dealt in this game. The Progetto is honestly an amazing tank. While I've been very, very frustrated playing this vehicle today with the battles I've played. I've actually been enjoying this tank at the same time. The gun is not great on the accuracy, I'll be honest. There are many shots I've played in this vehicle that are irritating, but when it's able to work well, oh, it works amazingly. You'll notice there, I blocked my mill purposely, told him I got it so I can shoot this Progetto, because I wanted that mill to deal with the tanks up top on the hill so that nobody would push over the hill and start shooting us in the rear. And you'll see, I've already tracked that Progetto once, and because of that tracking shot, well, that Progetto is now at six health. Unfortunately, because that a mill two back down the hill, well, you never guess what happened. The 50 TP prototype decided to push up, shoot my STB one, and then because of that, the STB one went down to shoot the 50 TP, and the E3 got the confidence to drive over the ridge and shoot the STB. It's a whole long story when you think about it, but basically what it says is tanks lost hit points because this mill didn't want to hold. One good thing is you'll notice because I'm in an auto reloader, I was able to get two shells into that. 50 TP prototype, one of them tracking him, and the next one finishing him off. I cannot stress how important tracking shells are in any tank. Unless you are in a vehicle that has huge alpha like a 60 TP, yeah, tracks might not be as important then, but when you're in a vehicle that has a quick reload, especially a medium tank, it doesn't even need to be an auto reloader. Being able to track your opponent and lock them in position is incredible incredibly influential. When you saw me track that 50 TP there, if I didn't shoot his track wheel, that guy easily would have gotten into cover and he would have still been alive right now. But here we go, there's one shell, two shells, and obviously I'm gonna load a heat shell in for the third. Boom, E75 finished off. That was quite a healthy tank. I mean, that guy had half of his health left and now he's dead. 
Although, unfortunately, you'll also notice that my turn armor, again, just not doing anything for me here. Now we are down to 486 hit points. Now, I got very lucky in this battle. We've already blocked 1,000 damage. One thing that is great about this tank is that its upper plate is very, very troll. It's a 70-degree angle, so a lot of AP shells will ricochet off of it. But if you read up there in the chat, I was quite angry at that Emil. All he needed to do was hold that hill, and we probably could have very easily won this battle without even a clutch, because there's only three tanks left in the enemy team, and if that Emil had held the middle part, I dealt with the Progetto, and the STB had held the top part, nobody could have pushed. It would have been an easy, easy win. But, as you can see, now it has turned out to a very tricky game. Now, that STB asked for help, but I knew that that was a lost cause. If I had tried to actually use my hit points to help him there, I wouldn't have gotten away, and I would have died. So instead, I said, you know what? I'm going to find out where this grill is. He's a guy that can one-shot me. I'm actually up against three tank destroyers, but the grill is one that I knew where it was. And where the enemy team was currently sitting was obviously in the middle where the STB died. So I knew that the grill had to be separated from the rest of the opponent. So I used that knowledge to my extent, and boom, grill's dead. So now we're sitting at 4,700 damage. But there's still a pretty healthy T1 to any three, and a Fosh that, as you can see, is also not a one-shot. But because we are in an auto Loader. I've got a very nice advantage of still being able to clear this guy in three seconds if I connect both of my shells. So here we go. We got the Fosh, and oh, you know I want to poke this bush to try and get shells in. That's what I was thinking right now. I need to clear that Fosh, but oh, tragedy. I get spotted. Oh, that's not good. So I'm driving away. This Fosh, I know, instantly is trying to rush me because he's out of the base cap. So we duke his shot. Obviously, it's a Fosh, so that thing's got terrible accuracy. But there we go. I did what I needed to. We've got one shell into that guy, and that has made him a one shot. Now, the E3, he is just speeding along. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen today, dude. So I'm driving away. That E3 misses, thankfully. And this is where not good stuff happens. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Well, the Fosh, I finish him off. He decided to not turn his vehicle first and instead let me just kill him. So we got this E3 trying to drive up the hill, but boom, using that reverse speed. And as I said, track wheels are key. I tracked him once. He used his repair kit. Now, normally, tank destroyers carry two repair kits. That makes sense. But this guy, he was running super speed boost. And what that means is he doesn't have two repair kits. So there you go. We've tracked him twice. And again, I'm going to wait. Boom! Another tracking shot. And with that, well, it's a pretty done deal. This is why running an auto reloader is amazing. Because with an auto loader, you can't do that. You can't shoot a vehicle like the Fosh and then reload in another shell to shoot a tank like the T110E3. And with that, we did a 6,500 damage victory and made 300,000 credits. I love the Progetto. It's a fantastic tank, and you can get out ridiculously good battles in a tank like this because of the influence the auto-reloading gun has. I really like this tank because it's the only true medium that has a gun that feels so nice. But as I said... For most of the games I've played in this tank today, it just doesn't feel great because you can't do much. When you're up against a haul down medium, uh, like a 62A or, you know, an STD, you really can't do much because your tank is only good for exposed opponents that you can very easily clip. So, I love this tank, but I also hate it sometimes. Either way, I thought this would be a really good battle to showcase just what you can do in some really tricky engagements if you know how to use your knowledge and power. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and other than that, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye!